In this video, I'll be discussing the first book in the Percy Jackson series, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. So the quick spoiler-free review of this is that um, this is a good book, and I think that it even stands up to like sort of an adult reading, because I read this when I was a kid, and I thought it was really good, because I, I was a kid. Um, but I actually think that even re I listened to this, so re-listening to this as an adult, I actually thought it went... Um, it was actually still quite good, and it still held up, um, and it obviously isn't as good as it would be if you read it when you were younger, and also perhaps I'm getting a little bit of that nostalgia, um, you know, rose-tinted glasses sort of thing going on, but I still think that this book holds up, it has an interesting, succinct plot, um, with, like, some relatively predictable, but still kind of enjoyable twists, as in, so the way this sort of book is structured is there's, like, a distinct place they're going, and, you know, it's, like, a journey towards it, and there's a couple of, you know, a few things that happen along the way that swerve around a bit, and then you realise that that place where they're going, you know, that you, it's not what you expected, and that's the end of the book. And then you have, like, a satisfying conclusion, and then you have another twist, and that's the end of the book. And so this is kind of an enjoyable structure. Um, it's not bad. You, you know, you have a distinct idea of what's going on, but not so, but then, you know, it gets subverted a little bit, and you're like, oh, that's cool. Um, and, well, because this book is written for kids, um, it's not exactly, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out what the twist is, but it's still kind of fun that it's there, it's still kind of fun that there's a bit of, um, subversion. Um, and I actually can't tell you if I would have figured out the, uh, the last twist, um, on my own, because, um, like, I, I, I read this so long ago that I just knew what was going to happen. Um, but yeah, so with all that said, to stop rambling for the spoiler-free, um, for the spoiler-free review, um, I think that this was a, this is a good book, and, you know, maybe you've heard about this book, uh, and you're wondering, you know, is it worth picking up, you know, as an adult or a teenager or whatever you are? And I have to say the answer is yes. Pick it up. You'll probably enjoy it. You'll have a fun time. There's humor. Um, it, it has, you know, a good pacing. Uh, there's, you know, uh, you, you get to see. And if you're into Greek mythology as well, or even just mythology in general, or maybe even you want to learn about Greek mythology, it, it's just a bit of fun. I remember uh, my classics teacher a few years ago was like, oh, I really like Percy Jackson because people at least come in with a vague understanding of Greek mythology to my classes. So with all that said, if you're into Greek mythology um, and you're willing to give it a go, Give it a go. It's, it's still it's still good. It still holds up. So um, let's get into the spoilers here. <clears throat> um, so this book, uh, I was a bit, a little bit like some things in terms of what I'm going to compare this uh, reading of it or listening to it to when I originally read it um, a few years ago, uh, and then originally oh like ten years ago, and then I've reread it, re it a couple of times since then. And so the main thing that holds up that I still enjoy is the humor and the per and the uh, the way that. Greek mythology is presented. That still holds up to me. So, Percy Jackson as a character is funny, you, you get funny situations, um, and there's lots of jokes, you know, around, like, the, the <laughs> like, when they go to the underworld and that big dog, Cerebus, I think is called, and he's, like, they're, like, playing with him and stuff to distract him, and, like, the way they present Hades and all this sort of stuff, and so the humor does hold up, and it's still funny, and I enjoy the way, I mean, my favorite scenes in this book is uh, when Percy interacts with gods and, and mythological creatures, and the way that Rick Riordan, yep, Rick Riordan, the author, the way he presents these interactions, you know, honestly, I still really enjoy that, particularly, um, when Percy interacts with his dad towards the end of this book, is really, really good. So that holds up, and, um, the other, the other thing that, uh, that I enjoyed is, like I was sort of about, talked about at the very start in that spoiler-free section, is the, the structure. I think it's still really enjoyable, and it really, you know, makes you get that sense of progress throughout the book, where you know where you're going, and, um, me as someone who's read it before, I know the twist is lost, I know where I'm going, both, uh, where the author is pretending I'm going, and I know where I'm actually going, and I kind of enjoyed that, so that was good. Um, what doesn't hold up to me, though, and what I, what was a little bit disappointing to me, is the, uh, the level of sort of explanation it's given for, like, why things are happening, so you have the base level explanation, where it's like, oh yeah, this is happening because the gods, you know, we need to go on this quest because the gods can't help us, and so we need to do it ourselves, and, you know, Kronos is rising, blah blah blah, big spoilers. <laughs> um, but the problem, of course, is that that first level explanation is fine, but when you ask some, like, sort of more deeper searching questions, the explanations aren't really given to you, so you're like, okay, well, so we need to, for example, we need to find this lightning bolt and return it to Zeus, else there's going to be a war. But you can question literally every single part of it, and not, none of it really makes sense when you think about it. So, you know, part one, you're like, okay, um, why is there going to be a war if we can't find this lightning bolt? Surely Zeus wouldn't want to go to war if he's lost his biggest weapon, and the other gods have their biggest weapons. Wouldn't You know, why would he want to go to war at that time, right? And why would he think that... Um, but like, what what is he what is he thinking that Poseidon's up to? Does he think Poseidon wants to um, be in charge? And is Zeus such a dick that he would rather um, have like a have it be like a massive war that kills everyone rather than just you know be like okay you could be king for a bit then I guess. Um, 
can't he discuss it with his brother? Why can't Poseidon just be like, yo, dude, I, I, I really didn't steal it. You know, maybe it could be someone else who stole this. You know, but, so that's, you know, so that's, <laughs> so if we're analyzing this premise. So that first part of the premise is a bit silly. Okay, but then we say, you know, maybe, you know, there's explanations for this. So now we do have to find this lightning bolt and give it to Zeus so there won't be a war. Okay, the next part is why does it have to be Percy Jackson? Couldn't it be anyone? I mean, couldn't you just like go find a Navy SEAL team and be like, guys, come on, you gotta find this lightning bolt? Or, or um, gods or demigods or any, any group of people. Um, to see if we can find this lightning bolt, right? So why does it have to be Percy? Okay, and then we get past that. We're like, okay, so, so and say we, you know, there's an explanation for that, for that as well, why it has to be Percy. So now those two things are explained, but then the next part is why does why can't he have better help? I mean, does it really make sense? Like, I wouldn't send, uh, you know, two 12 year olds to go like overnight to like a town like 10 k's away. I'll, I wouldn't do that. That would seem a bit inappropriate, right? So I definitely wouldn't send two 12 year olds and a like a 20 year old Sato, which is apparently a 12 year old anyway, I definitely wouldn't send them with a fate of a world in their hands. And if say I, they have to be along, wouldn't you send like sort of a fellowship of ring type situation where you have a bunch of people who know what they're doing and then like, you know, the hobbits and in this case, the hobbits would be these, these kids. Wouldn't you do that? Um, and so, yeah, there's that, that's another sort of interesting, uh, interesting issue. And then if we get, you know, and if we take all of those three things as said, you know, so it has to be Percy, there will be a war and he has to go get this thing back. Okay. And it could, no one else can come along. Then the final thing is, why wouldn't, like, when they leave Camp Half-Blood, they get given, like, a bag with, like, 50 bucks in it or whatever. It's like, you're going on a multi-day trip. Like, I wouldn't, like, you wouldn't send, you, you can't cross a country with, like, the United States with 50 bucks. I mean, what's going on? It, give, give the dudes, a, like, do you not have money? Um, so yeah, so, and this is fine, because you can kind of, <clears throat> books really well written and it's really enjoyable, so it may sound like I'm talking a lot of shit here, and I kind of am, but what I'm, I guess what the point is, is that, um, this book is so good that even with all of these issues, I kind of just suspended my disbelief this high, and I was like, okay, you know, whatever, just tell me the story, I'll enjoy it. Um, and it might be, to be fair, this might be because I have that nostalgia feeling, um, because I did read this book back in the day, and I really liked it back then. So it may be that I'm giving it more benefit of a doubt than you will, and maybe you'll pick up this book and be like, this doesn't make any sense, it's annoying me. Um, and, you know, that's that's fair enough if that's if that's the case. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't judge anyone for that. But for me, I found that... Um, that it made enough sense, and that there was that first level of explanation. Like, for example, when he's like, oh, we get the explanation for why the gods can't help, and it's like, the gods can't directly interfere, and it's like, okay, why? And if I can't directly interfere, can I still not send you, like, a thousand dollars or something? Can I not send you some money? Um, and so, yeah, that's... So my big, like, so if we just want to summarize that part of it, um, the big thing that doesn't hold up is sort of plot holes and plot conveniences. That doesn't hold up very well. But the comedy and presentation of mythology is still really good. So if you're, you know, if you're willing to read for the comedy and that sort of thing, then you'll still have a good time. And, and the plot structure is good as well. So that's that bit summarized. And now I just want to jump into um, jump into the themes a little bit and some of the ideas that are presented. So, or not, maybe not themes, because they're not really overarching stuff, but just some of the um, philosophical ideas that kind of uh, leak through the story, which I find a bit interesting. So first of all, we have the idea that these, so it's presented early on to us that these are gods, but they're not gods with capital G. So they're not omniscient or omnipotent or anything like that. And so, that they are fallible and can be wrong and blah, 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 blah. And we kind of see that a lot. Like, Zeus is, sorry, um, Percy's dad, Poseidon, is like a massive dick. He just ditches him. He's a, literally a deadbeat dad. Definition deadbeat dad. He has sex with his mum, gets his mum pregnant, and then he ditches him. And doesn't even send, to quote Percy, a lousy life support check. And this is kind of presented as a joke, but actually it's kind of true. Like, this guy's just an asshole. Um, like, he's just a massive dick. And then, the, and it's interesting, because the one guy at the end, so Luke, who betrays Percy, is like, yeah, you know, the gods are massive dicks. And it's like, yeah, dude, you, you're kind of right. These, these are, like, terrible people. Um, and we, another example of this, uh, like, gods being terrible people is when we go to Hades and we visit Hades. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, we see, like, see, there's, like, airport security and stuff. And it's, like, it's a good, it's all a good meme. But then we get presented with this idea that if you live a um, a normal life, right, and you don't do much good, you don't do much bad, you just chill out, you go to work, you come home, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then you're doomed to walk around some fields for eternity? I mean, that's pretty bad, to be honest, like, that, that to me seems, like, who's getting judged for doing that, like, that's really immoral, like, I, like, I make a judgment on your life, I'm like, oh, you didn't do enough good, you didn't do enough bad, you will now walk around a field for eternity, like, what? That's so bad, that's so mean, and uh, so, like, um, immoral, and so the irony, of course, is that, you know, Hades is judging people, and then he's just eternity in a random field, and no one, and everyone's okay with this, the other god's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's fine, um, <clears throat> and then, like, this weird idea where, like, if you, come back three times and achieve the same thing, achieve, so, this idea of this Isles of the Blessed, where if you, um, if you achieve Elysium, which is, you know, the good part of Underworld, if you achieve that three times by getting revived three times, then you, uh, achieve Isles of the Blessed, and it's like, well, 
wasn't a big part of like that totally ignores environment and like the raising of people right because it isn't a big part of who you are also like where you're brought up and who brings you up and stuff so that that was just an interesting idea to me and so yeah so we just have this weird world where like the gods are like massive dicks and we're supposed to be on their side and they're just like terrible people um and like immature ter like terrible people who like will send you to eternity in some random fields i mean when i when i go into the underworld just people have just been sitting in an in a lobby for 300 years i mean you try sitting in a lobby for 300 years it's not gonna be fun um and so yeah these gods are just kind of bad people now the more i'm thinking about it, I i'm thinking you know this review is like i need to stop now because the problem is that what i said at the start is actually the truth i enjoy pastor jackson I'm, I'm and i'm looking forward to listening to the next book the sea of monsters but the problem is the more i talk about it the more i'm like do I, why do i like this series so don't listen to any of my analysis i take I, I take it back don't listen to any of it um read this, these books and enjoy these books and don't do what i've done and start talking about why they're bad for six minutes and realizing that maybe they are bad so don't do that um so <laughs> so in summary there's some interesting uh like ideas philosophy sort of um that comes through in this book which i question a little bit uh and there's a lot of plot holes but with all of that said it's actually good and um and i guess part of why it's good is just the vibe and i also um maybe i should just quickly touch on character as well that um <clears throat> percy jackson as a character is a really cool dude and he's not he doesn't suffer from that um you know the harry potter thing where harry potter like he's not really a person he's just like a cookie cutter person that you can like he doesn't have a character, right? Um, Percy Jackson doesn't really suffer from that. Percy Jackson actually has quite a defined character. Um, so first of all, he has dyslexia and ADHD, which is, you know, um, part of it. But he also has, like, quite a defined, like, um, set of, uh, like, morals and a code. And he's not, like, a black and white good guy. Like, he's fully willing to kill his uncle. Um, which I respect, to be honest, because his uncle's a dick. But, so Percy Jackson is not a cookie-cutter character. And he's fun and he's, he's funny. He's fun and he's funny. Um... And so he's really cool. And then you have, um, like, a sort of his foil, if you will, um, Annabeth, who's not really funny and she's quite serious and stuff. And then you kind of see their interactions. Um, and it's just, and that's cool. And then obviously Grover, I love to bits. Me, he's my favorite satyr. Um, and so our main cast of three characters is really cool and interesting. And then they're supported by, like, a sort of a secondary cast of also cool and interesting characters, like Luke, um, whose motivations I think are really interesting. And obviously Chiron, the centaur. Centaur? Senator. Centaur, I think. Um, who's, like, also interesting and, like, I, and I... I like the way he's presented. So we sort of have this really nice core cast of three characters supported by a supporting cast of also well-done characters. I love Dionysus, for example. Um, and so that probably... Because I was just trying to think in my head now, like, if I if there's so many plot holes in the series and I don't like it that much, why do I like it? Do you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I can talk for ten, like eight minutes or something about why it's bad, why do I think it's good? And I think the reason that I think it's good is because it's funny and there's a strong cast of characters and the plot, at least on a surface level, makes sense. Um... So, I think with those three things, you can tell a really cool story, even if, you know, some dude can sit in front of his freaking closet and talk about, and p pick apart the story. If those three things are there, um, a succinct plot, character, and some comedy, then most people can look past that. And it also helps if you're a kid, because uh, kids are really good at looking past plot holes. Um, but yeah, so, uh, in conclusion, I would say pick up this book, um, if you're not someone who's totally, like, a, like, if you're able to read a story, even if it's a little bit, um, it doesn't make a ton of sense. If you're still able to read and enjoy story, then I'd say pick up this book. It's funny, It's uh, you'll like the characters, and you'll probably have a good time. Um, and it's also a bit of lighter reading, you know, if you just want to chill out and you read a more chill book. Um, particularly if you're getting back into reading, it might, you know, it might be cool. Um, so yeah, uh, pick up this book, have a good time, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.